Before we dive into the video, I just want to let you know that iFlight are doing a huge 20% discount on their bind and fly version of the AOS 7 Evo. They're clearing stock ahead of the AOS 7 V5, which is launching relatively soon. I know loads of you love the AOS 7 for its durability and the super smooth footage that it's able to produce. And if you're looking to pick up a bind and fly version of this frame, this is the best time to do it. You're going to get the largest discount. So I'll put a link down in the video description. Please consider checking that out. This is going to be the best discount available. Hi there, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Who makes the very best performing motor for a 65 millimeter tiny whoop? That's the question we're going to be answering in this video. I have tested just a few tiny whoop motors, and we're going to be looking at their performance in terms of power, torque, and efficiency to find the very best pick for a 65 millimeter whoop. And this is my biggest, smallest motor test ever, because the motors are really tiny, but I've tested 28 of them for this video. So we've got all the bases covered from a load of manufacturers you will have definitely heard of, and some you may not have. So let's not waste any more time, let's dive right into it. Before we dive into the test results, I just wanna give you an overview of the motors we're gonna be looking at. We've got a couple of motors from Beta FPV, one from Newbie Drone, iFly, HDLRC, Flash Hobby, a whole heap of motors from T-Motor and RC in power, a motor from Gep RC, and a few motors from Happy Model. We've also got one token motor from Tiny Whoop, but don't worry because I'm gonna be testing a whole heap more Tiny Whoop motors very soon. I've reached out to Jesse and he's gonna hook me up with some test samples. These motors are all different sizes and KVs. I've got multiple KVs of the same motor in some cases. And the similarity is they are all either 07 or 08 in size and they all have one millimeter motor shafts. So with that covered, let's dive in and start looking at the results. If you're interested to see the test equipment and test methodology I used to test these truly tiny motors on my thrust stand, then you're gonna to want to watch the first video in this series where I cover all that. I'll put a link down in the video description. Let's get into the data now and start by looking at motor KV. And well, there are some surprises here. All right, let's start by looking at the motor KV. And we're testing over a whole range of different KVs here from 15,000 up to 25 and a half thousand KV. But I think the most important thing to see on this chart is the massive discrepancy that sometimes exists between the rated KV of the motor and the measured KV. Now I measure KV by driving the motor full throttle at three volts, dividing the RPM achieved by three to get the KV in RPM per volt. That may not be exactly the same way that manufacturers test KV, but at least my method is consistent. And we can see that some good motors test pretty similar to their rating. So this RC in power 0802 22,000 KV tests out at 21,400 KV. That's perfectly respectable. I've highlighted on this chart um, the worst offenders where it seems like the manufacturer has just printed a random number on the side of the motor and the letters KV after it because it just bears no relation. This SE0702 28,000 KV tests out at 21,900 KV. I mean, that's an enormous difference. That's like 20% difference in the KV from what it's rated at to what it's measured at. How are you supposed to get a feel for what the right KV is when you've got that kind of a discrepancy? You're gonna look at that and go, oh, I like 28,000 KV. I'll try something from RC and Power with a similar KV. So there's an 0702 29,000 KV. Perfect, that should be very similar. Nope, not similar at all. You're going from 21,900 up to 25,500 kV. That motor's gonna feel completely different. Um, it's gonna treat your battery completely differently. And yet it should be the same, right? Because the rated kVs are very similar. The worst offender by far is the T-Motor F0802. 25,000 kV as rated, testing at 16,850 kV. I mean, to end this discussion of motor KV on a positive note, this massive discrepancy between rated and measured KV used to be more of a problem with five inch motors as well, but it has gotten a lot better recently. And I don't know if that's had anything to do with the fact that I've been testing a heap of five inch motors and shouting at manufacturers that don't rate their motors correctly. But all that we can hope is that the same will happen with tiny whoop motors and that manufacturers will start testing the motors and writing the KV that they, they test on the motor rather than getting it from some formula or whatever. That said, right now it is a bit of a crapshoot, so hopefully this test data will be helpful for you to find motors of similar KV to each other. Now let's take a look at how these motors perform in a full throttle thrust test. 
And for that, I'm gonna need a test prop and I'm gonna be using the HQ lightweight 31 millimeter tri-blade prop designed for motors with one millimeter shafts. It's actually quite challenging to measure the thrust of these tiny motors because they only deliver about 100 grams of thrust at full throttle and that's way less than my thrust stand is designed to measure accurately. So we're gonna be looking at the motor RPM achieved at full throttle. A higher RPM is obviously gonna to correspond to more thrust because we're using the same prop every time. And the relationship between motor RPM and thrust is that thrust is proportional to the square of motor RPM. One of the first things I noticed looking at this test data was that at the high thrust levels, you can really see that the motor RPM is highly quantized. The motors are stepping between discrete levels on the way up and on the way down, and motors all cluster at certain levels at full throttle. Hi there everyone, Chris from the future here. I wasn't really happy with the quantization of this data, so I decided to do a little bit more testing and investigation into it. In order to accurately measure the thrust of these tiny little motors, I had to make some pretty drastic alterations to my test stand. This is the original five kilo load cell that was used to measure thrust, and the 200 gram calibration mass that was used to calibrate it. These are both gone, and instead I'm gonna be using this 0 0.1 kilo load cell and this very cute 20 gram calibration mass. And you can see that I fitted these to the test stand with some 3D printed adapters, secured it all nice and tightly, so we're ready to measure the thrust of these tiny little motors. Looking at the thrust data recorded by the load cells during a throttle ramp, we can see that there's no quantization of the thrust in this test data. And this shows that the actual RPM and the actual thrust that the motor is producing during the throttle ramp smoothly increases all the way to full throttle and confirms that the quantization that we're seeing is in the reported RPM over bidirectional D-shot rather than the actual RPM and thrust of the motor. If we look at the maximum thrust that these motors can deliver on my HQ 31mm test prop, we can see that the RCM Power 0702s, 0802s and 0703s with the highest KV really dominate the top of the charts here, only broken up by the Newbie Drone 0802 25,000 KV and the T-Motor 0802s 27,000 and 22,000 KV. But RCM Power really take really all of the top spots on these charts. The most powerful motor is the RCM Power 0703 27,000 kV and that delivers nearly 45 grams of thrust and that is more than double what you get from the lower performing motors on this chart which I think are limited by their low KVs. 17 and a half and 19,000 kV is not really enough to extract maximum performance out of these smaller props. The next chart we're going to look at is motor efficiency and this is really important for extending the flight time of your tiny whoop. I measure motor efficiency by giving the motors one amp of current at four volts, so that's exactly four watts of power, and seeing what RPM they're able to achieve. A higher RPM means that the motor is delivering more thrust with the same amount of electrical power and is therefore more efficient. Looking at this one amp RPM data, we can see that overall there's a pretty general rule, which is that the most efficient motors, which are up the right hand side of this chart, have low KVs and they tend to be the less powerful motors. The least efficient motors down at this end are the most powerful and they tend to have the highest KVs. And that's the general rule. There is a motor that bucks this trend, which is the RCM Power 0802 22,000 KV. And that's able to be one of the most powerful motors that I tested, as well as one of the most efficient. So something about that motor is particularly well made or well designed that's allowing it to be both powerful and efficient, but that's very much not the general rule. We also see in this chart some evidence of the discrete RPM steps, although it's less noticeable here because we are lower in the throttle band and there appear to be more uh, resolution, if you like, in commutation frequencies at lower RPMs. Now let's look at motor responsiveness. This is a measure of how fast the motor can accelerate or decelerate the test prop, and that's to do with how much torque it can generate. Motors that can generate more torque and are more responsive are able to change their RPM and therefore their thrust level more quickly in response to inputs from the flight controller. And that allows the flight controller to hold the tiny whoop more steady in the air. And it also means that the tiny whoop will accelerate faster and change direction more quickly as well. Looking at the results for motor acceleration and deceleration, we see that motors that are narrow and tall with high KVs tend to be the most responsive. And the RCM Power 0702s and 0703s with those higher KVs are doing really, really well in terms of motor responsiveness, both in acceleration and deceleration.
Motors that are wide and flat with low KVs tend to be less responsive, and so it's no surprise that we have the 0802s with the sort of lower KVs, 17,500, 19,000 KV, as the least responsive motors. But for the Tiny Whoop motors, I'm really excited to test some higher KV options from Tiny Whoop because I expect them to be a lot more performant in terms of responsiveness. Now that we've looked at all of the performance factors individually, it's time to bring them together into the summary scores. This chart shows the summary scores for all the motors that I've tested across the three categories, motor responsiveness, maximum thrust, and efficiency. And the way that I calculate the scores is I take the performance of a particular motor in a particular category and divide it by the average performance of all the motors I've tested in that category to get its score. This means that an average motor will get a score of 100%, a motor that's 10% better than average, a score of 110%, and a motor that's 10% worse than average, a score of 90%. The weight normalized score is calculated as the average of all the individual scores normalized by the weight of the motor. And if a motor would make a typical 65 millimeter tiny whoop with a 300 milliamp hour battery 10% heavier, then it needs to have 10% more performance to compensate for the extra weight. This means that if you have two motors with identical performance, but one is a little bit lighter, it's going to get a better weight normalized score. Topping the charts are the RCM Power 0702s. The 29,000 kV delivers slightly more thrust and responsiveness than the 27,000 kV, but with slightly less efficiency. Then we have the RCM Power 0703, 27,000 and 23,000 kV motors. The 0703, 27,000 delivers the most thrust, but because of its extra weight, it's not able to beat out the 0702 in terms of weight normalized score. So if you've got a slightly heavier drone or you're using maybe 40 millimeter props, you could consider the 0703 for its extra torque and top end power. If we're looking for efficiency, then we're going to be looking at some 0802s, either the T-Motor M0802 27,000 kV or the RCM Power 0802, either 22,000 or 25,000 kV motor. These are slightly heavier, but they're more efficient motors. And so if you're looking for flight time, that might be the better choice. The Happy Model 0702s, 28,000 and 26,000 kV do okay but they're not quite able to live with the RCM power motors in terms of their maximum performance and maximum thrust, although they do deliver significantly better efficiency. So if you're looking for that balance of maximum thrust and efficiency at a light weight, then certainly the Happy Model SE 0702s are also worth considering. There are links to all of the best performing motors down in the video description. And if you click through on those links and make a purchase, the retailer will donate a small portion of the profit from the sale to help support the channel. It won't cost you anything and it's a really great way for you to help me make more videos like this for all of you. Make sure to check out the other videos in this series to get your Tiny Whoop flying its best and to like and subscribe to the channel so that you see the follow up videos in this series as soon as they become available. That's all I have for you for today, so I'll catch you in the next one. Happy flying.